Hi, my name is Justine Harkness, and in this video, we'll look at how to perform circuit calculations when we have resistors in parallel. Adding resistors in parallel can be thought of as just creating a resistor with just a larger cross-sectional area. And if we think back to our formula for resistance with our resistivity, we know that resistance is equal to the resist resistivity times the length over the area. So if we were to increase the cross-sectional area of the resistor, we would have an overall decrease in the resistance of the resistor. The one way I like to remember the differences between adding in parallel and in series, when we add in series, remember we are increasing the length of the resistor, and that's why we just have the R1 plus R2 plus R3. I just remember, that because my length is in the numerator, I just add like I would normally. However, when I'm looking at resistors in parallel, because I'm increasing the cross-sectional area, and area is in the denominator, the way that I'm adding has one over the resistance. So that's just one way that you can remember the difference between adding in series and adding in parallel based on that resistivity formula. So that guy, resistivity formula, is certainly a great one to know uh, for physics. Now also, remember when you're using this equation, if you just do a quick plug and chug, what you've really solved for is really one over the total resistance. So after you crunch your numbers, make sure you take the reciprocal at the end to really solve for our total instead of one over our total. Now let's take a look at some of the consequences of having resistors wired in parallel. The first thing to note is that the voltage drop across each resistor is equal. And you can think about this as kind of like going skiing. So say you have your mountain, and you have, of course, your ski lift, which will take you up to the top of the mountain. The ski lift in a circuit is somewhat like a battery, which increases the potential energy of charges. Now if we go through one side of our mountain, we would lose all of the potential energy that we gain. So we'll call this root one, and this would be like going through the resistor on top. We could also take the path down at the right, which we'll call arm two. Now notice in both cases, regardless of which loop that I I uh, go, if I go down the left or down the right of the mountain, the energy change in both cases is the same. I gain a certain amount of energy as I go up the ski lift, and I lose all of that energy going down both sides of the mountain. And for the same reason, whenever I go up the battery, no matter what loop I take, because I'm getting back to the same point, I have the same voltage drop. And we'll cover this in a later video when we look at Kirchhoff's laws. The other thing to note is that the total resistance of the circuit is smaller. And this makes sense. Remember that the resistance is inversely proportional to area. Let's consider a real life example of resistors in parallel. And I think a really great example would be trying to drink milkshakes. They are delicious, although they are somewhat thick, so they can be resistive to the suction of a straw. So if we try to drink a smoothie through, say, a coffee stir, it's going to be really hard to drink that smoothie since the area is really small and there's a large resistance to the flow of the smoothie. But say instead we get a normal straw. It still is a little bit tough, but it's a lot easier since we have a wider area. But say we really want to hoover in that smoothie, we can use two straws. It'll be a lot easier. We have even more of an area, so we get even more uh, flow of our smoothie. And this is exactly what we see with resistors in parallel. We have two parallel paths, so we can get more current running, just like two parallel straws gives us even more smoothie consumption. So let's apply this with some practice questions. 
So here our question tells us, in a typical household, outlets are wired in parallel, such that each time a device is plugged in, another parallel pathway is created. Use the circuit diagram below, um, which shows a wiring of a conventional kitchen, to answer the following questions. Now looking at our diagram, we have three different things that we can plug in. We have a toaster, a coffee maker, and a stand mixer. Now part A asks us, what is the total resistance of the circuit when only the toaster and the coffee maker are plugged in? So here we are looking at the toaster and the coffee maker. For now we can ignore that stand mixer. So we know that the toaster and the coffee maker are wired in parallel. So we're gonna use our formula for things wired in parallel. One over the R total will be one over the resistance of the first thing, which here could be R toaster, we'll call it RT, plus one over the resistance of our coffee maker, we'll call it RC. So that'd be one over 26 plus one over 24. And crunching the numbers there would give us 0 0.08. But remember that's one over our total in order to get the total resistance. We have to take the reciprocal of that. So one over 0 0.08 would be equal to 12. 0.5 ohms. That would be the total resistance when just the toaster and the coffee maker are plugged in. Now part B asks us what is the total current drawn from the main panel, which in case here is our battery. Note that a typical voltage in a house is around 120 volts, which is why we have that 120 volts here for our battery. So we know the voltage of the battery is equal to the total current times the total resistance. So we're gonna solve for current, that will be equal to the voltage of the battery, essentially the main panel, over the total resistance. So we'll have 120 volts divided by our resistance that we calculated earlier of 12.5 ohms. And when we crunch these numbers, we would get 9.6 amps. Finally, let's take a look at part C. Now we are asked what would happen if we have the stand mixer, the coffee maker, and the toaster all running. And we have a, t a, a maximum current allowed of 20 amps. So we have to calculate how much current would be flowing through the wire if we had all three of these devices plugged in. So first let's calculate the total resistance using our parallel formula. So we would have one over the resistance of the toaster, one over the resistance of the coffee maker, and then one over the resistance of the stand mixer. We add all of those up, we get 0.25. And of course, we've solved for one over our total. Let's take the reciprocal to get the total resistance, the one over 0.25, or four ohms. So, Let's see what our current would be here. So we have V is equal to IR. Rearranging that, we get I is V over R. So we're looking at 120 volts divided by four ohms. That would give us a current of 30 amps. So there would be a risk of an electrical fire. This would be a big yes. We have exceeded the amperage of our wire. Now, luckily, in most houses, you will have circuit breakers. The way that those work is essentially it acts like a switch, where instead of sending current through the rest of the circuit, it shorts the circuit out, so we no longer are sending current. So even though we would be exceeding the amperage, 
If we had a 20 amp maximum current, we'd have a 20 amp circuit breaker. So when we exceed that maximum of 20 amps, we disconnect that circuit and stuff does not catch on fire. So yay for circuit breakers. But now you should feel more comfortable performing circuit calculations whenever we have resistors in parallel.